Good afternoon, everyone. I am well aware that I have failed you or maybe even to say myself. The plan was to do a daily vlog on my training and my preparation towards the Ironman. And uh, eventually life happened, I guess you can say. We were a little bit more busy with a birthday, things we had to do for our jobs, school with the children, sports with the children. They also had a lot of competitions in the last few weeks and there was just a little bit too much to do. And the last of a priority, my uh, video training vlogs, I guess, uh, were eventually cancelled from that list. So uh, today is going to be a training vlog three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so ever. Uh, maybe weekly, I think weekly, as I think it will also have a little bit more volume and a little bit more meaning to it um, because they're just focusing in on one specific training is not going to be that um, that interesting. Focusing in on just one training per day and the uh, daily things is not going to be that interesting, I think. So <clears throat> for the rest of the day, so this morning we went for breakfast with uh, some of our family members uh, for my uh, fiance's uh, uh, 40th birthday and now in the afternoon, the only thing that I have to do is still an endurance run of eight miles, which roughly estimates is 12.8 kilometers. So I will probably do my normal round of 14K. I have had some really good sleep yesterday and I think I am as good as recovered from the last few days. Yesterday I had a 65k ride, so that is uh, approximately 40 miles. Uh, I did it uh, just under two hours. The day before yesterday, Friday, was an interval training of 45 minutes. No, it was a tempo run, 45 minutes. On Thursday I've done a swim, 1500 meters, and a bike ride, 45 minutes. On Wednesday, I had an easy run, six miles, I think. And on the Tuesday was also a 1500 meter swim and a 45 minute interval bike. Yeah, so that sums it up for this week. This week was a, a recovery week. Uh, so the um, intensity and the training volume was a little bit low, which really um, was really needed much needed um, and over the next few weeks the training intensity will go up again. I have just a little under three months to go until the Ironman and I'm uh, yeah training is really going well. I'm going to finish up some uh, overnight oats just now and a cup of coffee before heading out the door and going for a 14k run. So the socks that I've been testing out over the last one and a half week are the socks by a company called Stocks, Stocks Energy Socks. I know them from my uh, compression tubes and these are just the compression socks. I've bought them in the, I think these are the box for the black ones, but I've put the uh, white ones in them. These are the ones I'm going to save for the 16th of June, but I've also got another Pair. So these are the black ones, which are really thick quality. I think they have them in three sizes, depending on the uh, thickness of your calf. I have an M2, should say somewhere on here. Yeah, on the inside, there it is. So these are M2s, and up until now, they're holding up really well. The last socks that I've been testing out for running, I think it was like about the same one and a half week in where they got some holes in the big toe area which is really annoying because then you end up with a lot of socks they weren't that pricey as these ones are but still you're expecting running socks to last a little bit longer than uh, just under two weeks 
yeah, I'm going to get dressed and then I will be heading out the door and going for the 14k long run for the day, which is the last training of the day. Tomorrow is a rest day. Yeah, and I will update you on the rest of the week, which kind of what training we're having over the rest of the week. See you. I am just over one kilometer into my long run and of course the rain started picking up which reminds me this is exactly the feeling that I would like for them to incorporate on the finish line pictures. Everybody always, let me clear up the screen, everybody always sees the finish line picture where everything went well and everybody's celebrating in the heat of the moment while these are the moments that really count and I feel that the Ironman event itself is just a fraction of the entire process of leading up to that race I know so for sure so yeah when you see the eventual finish line picture of me just remember that most of my trainings outdoor consisted of weather like these. In all honesty, I have to say that I feel a little bit tempted to go for the 12.8K instead of the 14K because it's been raining ever since the first kilometer. On the other side, I do have a little advantage in form of a tailwind. So I do think we have to stay positive some way. With the rain having cleared up, I also had to say goodbye to my beloved tailwind and welcome little headwind so i think i have to dial back a little bit in my running pace which is okay for me and it's especially being a recovery week it's absolutely no problem which reminds me if you decide to take up a challenge like this long distance running event or triathlon or something where you will be doing a lot of volume a lot of intensity over a longer period of time. I think it is of the utmost importance to always adhere to your training plan. And if necessary, just leave out some of the trainings. What you really don't want to do is exaggerate things. I've dealt with many injuries in the past, overuse injuries, all types of things. And they all started with me not listening to my body, wanting to do more in the hope of it resulting into a better overall fitness, which eventually led to worsening. I do now we're having DNFs and always being able to finish the races where I have trained for, but I do feel that because of not listening to my body, are not sticking to the training plan. I could have done much better if I have done just so. Coming up over on the bend, just a little stretch back. I think I'm just under seven kilometers. So reaching the halfway point, but then it is just a little stretch back home. It's 
it's not that I forgot to push record over the last few kilometers. It's just the headwind has been so strong that I guess the audio would have been crushed instantly. So I'm coming up at the 10K mark here, still contemplating on that 12.8K over the 14K. I'll just see how things is the headwind back again. I'll just see how things go over the next few kilometers. I decided to take my own advice and keep it there at 13 kilometers, which is just 200 more than the uh, miles prescribed in the uh, training plan, which was uh, the equivalent of 12.8. Earlier this weekend, I contemplated on whether I should buy the Osmo Action 4 or the Pocket 3, which is a great camera, as I could see on uh, all the YouTube re reviews. But dropping this camera, the Action 3, earlier, in this run and having inspected it just now it holds up like a tank so i do not have any protection around it i don't have the protective covering ring around the lens there's nothing on it it's just the camera by itself and i dropped it in the middle of the pavement i expected something to be cracked or busted or broken but hey it's all here in one piece and i'll show you the footage uh just now uh, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, I have something like this with me and not some flimsy little camera that will just break. Geluk by an ongeluk, as we would say in the Netherlands. Uh, my mind has been made up for me, I think. So this might be the last long run, which I will be recording on the Osmo Action 3. I'm just going to walk up over to the house and then I'll, I'll we'll wrap up this video later on. See you in a while. Oh man, I hope, I really hope I still managed to save some of that audio out there. The wind was really gusting and I don't know, I'm under the impression that <clears throat> the moist combined with the wind and the onboard microphones on this camera are not really the best as it comes to uh, audio quality so that's why i usually uh, attach the external microphone to the osmo action 3 but when running i don't want a big microphone sticking out and i'm not able to put it anywhere in my pocket so that's why i only brought the camera by itself which is actually the main reason why i wanted to look into the osmo action 4 because it has the ability to wirelessly connect to the DJI microphone 2, which is really cool because it saves you the transmitter where you have to put it on the side and it saves you the cables dangling from your camera and everything else. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to see if I can speed up my workflow for um, the process of the videos. And I hope that the audio, like I said, is going to be a little bit manageable. If not, then I will have to do a voiceover, I think, for the part where I was outside and running. And that's going to be it for today. I'm going to try to keep it down to at least one video a week, maybe even more when uh, something special comes up or if there's a lot of time, free time on hand. Thank you very much. Um, remember, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It only takes you a second and it helps out this channel very much. If you would like to see more of my, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to get notifications, click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much and keep your training going and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.